Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 3 of May, June 2009. Uh, now, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. Now, let's move on to question number 1. Uh, so, here we have to solve the equation this. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. Again, my apologies for this printing. I did run out of ink. But anyways, we'll try to solve this step by step. So here we have what? We have ln of 2 plus exponential minus x is equal to 2. Now solving means finding the unknown, so we have to find the value of x, right? Um, so we have to first simplify this. So how can you make x become subjects? But first, let's look at this thing. What is ln? Ln is actually log base of e. Now, to simplify this, for example, I have log base of e something over here equal to a. To find the value inside, I have to send the base over here. For example, to find x, I have to be exponential of a. Similarly, to find the value inside, I have to send the base over here. So 2 plus this thing have to be exponential as well. Now, I have to make this become subject, so exponential minus x will be minus 2 right here. And next thing, since uh, since our x is on top as a power, I want to send this down, I have to apply ln on both sides. So exponential this uh, is equal to ln this one minus 2 over here. Now, this will become minus x by the laws of logarithms. We can send this over here. And we have ln of e, and here we have ln of e squared minus 2. This will become just 1 because you can check ln of exponential it is just 1. Here you go. So finally, x will have to be minus ln of exponential minus 2. So here we have exponential square minus 2. Then we have uh, minus ln of answer. That should be minus 1.68 correct to 2 decimal place. That is for your value of x in this question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. So here we have what? We have a diagram with the curve equation as y equal to root of 1 plus 2 tan square x between 0 and pi by 4 for this one. Great. Now uh, what is the question? We have to use the trapezium rule with three intervals. So three intervals to estimate the value of this integral. Okay, so how do we perform this? So we use our formula. Again, trapezium rule is just a formula we have to know. It is what? Half. H is the width of the interval times. Um, we call this uh, F1 or Y1. So F1, first value, at zero, right? And the last one, plus two times F1 f2 and f and minus 1. Again, this is just a formula that we use to, to find this. Nothing special, just a formula you have to know. Now, we have to find the, the width of the interval because we are using three intervals. This whole thing here is what? Well, this whole thing will be pi by 4 minus 0. That will be pi by 4. Now, we want to have three intervals divided by 3. That should be pi over 12. So h will be pi over 12 for this value. Now, f of 0 is pretty easy. f of 0 is the initial value at 0. Right, so replace in your equation, which is this one that will be root of 1 plus. That will become 0, so 1 plus 0, that will be this. And this is just 1. Now the last one, this is the uh, last one, is pi by 4, so we have pi by 4. Replace back in your equation, you have 1 plus 2 tan square of pi by 4. Now this is the value of 1, you will have root of 3 as the last value. So this we found already, so we have to find the 1 over here and 1 over here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 3 intervals. So this is pi over 12 and this is pi over 6, right? Because we're increasing by the same value angles every single time for these intervals. So again, find the values one by one. So f of pi over 12. Replace back in your formula, which is root of 1 plus 2, 10 square of pi over 12. So here we have to use um, radians. So 10 of pi over 12 
square times 2 plus 1 the root of that, that should be 1.0694 and what is this one? replace the value back in you will have f of pi over 6 right so again same step replace back in your formula which is 2 tan square of pi over 6 times 2 plus 1 root of that that will be 1.29099 Okay, so finally, let's plug everything back in our main equation. So the area, or this one, the integral will become half h is pi over 12. The first value is 1, the last one is root 3, plus 2 times f1, f2. So f1 is this one, 1.0694 plus 1.2909. Let's see what do we get. So first find the value inside. 1 plus root 3 plus 2 times 1.0694 plus 1.2909. Oh, syntax error. Sorry about that. So 1 plus root 3 plus 2 times 1.0694, 1.2909. This will be 7.4527 times pi over 12 times half. That should be 0 0.9755, which is 0 0.9762323 to three, um, to three decimal place. But here we have to provide the answer to two decimal place. So that will be 0 0.98. Okay, this is the uh, value of this integral according to trapezium rule. Okay, again, trapezium rule, just a formula you have to know. Nothing special, just a formula. And how do you find h, which is the width of the interval? You take the whole interval, divide by the number of interval. That's how you find h. And everything else, you just, you just have to plug into the, the formula. Now for part 2, it tell you that the estimate found in part 1 is denoted by e. So this one is called e. Right, explain without further calculation, so don't use calculation, whether another estimate using um, trapezium rule with six interval now so we're trying to use six interval for that for that one would be greater or less than e so by observation you can see already from this diagram right if we use the trapezium rule here what can you see it is it is already an overestimation if that makes sense now if you were to decrease or increase the number of increase the number of, of um, intervals, you will make less mistake, you will make less error. As you can see, you'll be more accurate. Because of that, you will say, well, this new thing we're trying to find, this one will be greater than or less than. It will be less than because it will be less than E because we know E is an overestimate in the first place we know this this fact it will be less than E because there will be less error in calculation and it is observed on the diagram as well as you can see if you increase the intervals the amount of error will decrease compared to that one and that will be your question uh, number two so let's move on to question number three. So here we have to prove the ID, which are we have cos sec 2 theta plus cot 2 theta is equal to cot theta. So we have to prove the left hand side become the right hand side. Now, as you can see, first thing we realize, well, the double angle here had disappeared into a single angle. So we might have to use double angle formulas that we know. Uh, for example, uh, we know cos to this one is uh, cos square theta minus um, sine square theta now this can be simplified to 2 cos squared uh, theta minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine square theta otherwise so we know also this one which is just 2 sine theta cos theta 
Now just write this down over here because they might be just useful. Now replace, uh, first thing first, what is cosec? It is 1 divided by my sine and the angle is 2 theta. Now what is cot? Cot is simply cos 2 theta over sine 2 theta. Now we can combine them obviously because the base are the same. That will be sine. On top you will have this. Now let's simplify by using the substitutions we have. So the base will be simple, will be 2 sine of this, cos of this. Now for the top, uh, well, what is the goal here? The goal here is to get cot theta, which is simply sine, will be what? Uh, cos over, sorry, this is cos over sine. That's the goal, to find this one. Now for the top to be cos, I will have to choose this one, right? So I have to choose this one, which is 1 plus, and this will become 2 cos square this minus 1. Again, we have to also look at the goal of this proof. What are we trying to do? To have cos on top, sign on the bottom. So that's why we change these two to this one and not this one. So simplify, this and this will go away. So you will have 2 divided by 2 cos theta. Now simplify, this and this will cancel out. And this and this will cancel out. So in the end, you will have cos theta divided by sine theta, which is cot theta. And this is shown as required. Part 1 done. Now for part 2, uh, it says hence, hence means using part 1, we have to solve this equation. Cosec, cosec 2 theta plus cot 2 theta e is equal to 2. So we have to solve this equation, right? Now how can you solve this one? Well, obviously, uh, since it tells you hence, you mean using part 1. In part 1, we know this is this. So basically, this whole thing here, we know already, should be cot theta is 2. Now, what is cot? Cot is simply 1 over 10 is 2. Cross multiply, you will have, well, 10 theta will have to be the value of half. Now, we can solve this pretty easily. It should be. It is positive, it will be in the first quadrant and the third one. This is simply the value of theta, that will be 180 plus theta. So theta will be what? 10 inverse of half. So that's around 10 inverse of half. That will be, in degrees obviously, that will be 26.6. But also this one is 180, plus the value should be also 206.6. Okay. So these will be the two values of theta we have for this equation. Okay, and this is your question number three. Now let's move on to question number four. So here we have equation. What is that equation? It is x cubed minus 2x minus 2 is 0. It has one real root. Okay, that is good to know. Question, we have to show that this root lies between 1 and 2. How can we do this? Pretty easy. First thing first, let f of x equal to your equation, which is this one right here. Now, taking the value of 1 in the first place, you will have 1 minus 2 minus 2. That should be minus 3. Then taking the value of 2, that should be 8 minus 4 minus 2, and that should be 2. So here we have a negative value. Here we have positive value. So you say, well, this is because since the sign changed, there's a change of sign. Because of that, we can confirm it has to lie between those two. That's the idea behind. Pretty easy, right? Now, part three, we have to do what? We have to prove that if uh, a sequence of values given by this formula. So let me write this again because, you know, it's not good here. We don't see it properly. So x and plus 1 is equal to 2x and cube plus 2 divide by the value of 3 x here square minus 2 now this formula converges then it converges to this root so the idea is well we have to show this equation right here this formula gives you back the main equation so we first remove the subscript we'll say well right now we have x equal to 2 x cube plus 2 over 3 x square minus 2 Cross multiply, what you will have? You have 3x cubed minus 2x 
is equal to 2 x cube plus 2. Send everything to one side, you will have what? 3 minus 2 will become x cube minus 2x minus 2. This is shown as required. This is the same as this. That's the idea behind question part 2. Now for part 3, uh, use this iterative formula. So using this formula right here, find the root criteria to the decimal place. Okay, 2dp. Give the result of each to 4dp. Now, what is x1? x1 we have to choose, but we have to find a few values first. Correct to 4, 4 uh, decimal place. And then we can uh, move on with our questions. So first, x1, since we know the root lies between 1 and 2, we'll choose the half point, the midpoint, which is 1.5. So here you go. 1.5 will be my answer. Great. Now, I have to plug this in my formula, which is 2. Answer, cube, plus 2, divided by 3. Answer, square, minus 2. So next will be 1.5217. 1.5217. One point five two one four as well. One point five two one four. So perfect. We can stop right here. As you can see, um, our values converges, and the value correct to two decimal places will be one point five two. So this is your answer for this iteration. So this is your question number four. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.